Was I happy with the seat I did have? Yes, I really was. And to be any small part of that uh, uh, suited me uh, very, very well. And uh, besides, I was their ticket home. They couldn't get home without me. <laughs> so you had ultimately the biggest responsibility. Yes, yes. The Apollo 11 mission would forever be one of humanity's biggest achievements. Some of you may remember it as the mission where we successfully touched the moon for the first time. The Apollo 11 mission saw Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module pilot Buzz Aldrin as brave men who made history by being the first individuals to walk on the moon. However, there was one more astronaut who was on that mission. The astronaut is not as popular as the first two that were mentioned. His name is Michael Collins. He remains rather obscure because of the role he played in the mission. Now, 55 years after the landing, Michael Collins has shed light on the unspoken parts the astronauts encountered on their mission to the moon. Why is this astronaut coming out now to talk about the mission? What could they have found or encountered on the moon that is so secret? And what will happen to him after these informations go public? Join us in this video as we discuss the spooky secret that Apollo 11 astronaut exposes about their mission to the moon. Everyone remembers Neil Armstrong's iconic statement as he took his first steps on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This statement was well channeled considering the situation in which it was uttered and the enormity of the situation. Buzz Aldrin followed Armstrong as the two gentlemen astronauts explored the new terrain. Michael Collins was the third astronaut on the mission. Unfortunately, he could not join them on the walk around the moon. He was required to stay in the moon orbiting command module. Even before the advent of modern technology and telescopes, our ancestors observed and studied the moon using the rudimentary instruments they had. Historically, humans have meticulously tracked lunar phases, calculated the duration of lunar eclipses, and tied the moon to numerous myths and legends. They recognized its influence over tides and its role in shaping our calendars. Some even suggest the moon impacts mental health. Early lunar exploration involved unmanned spacecraft like the Soviet Luna and American Ranger and Surveyor programs, gathering crucial data on lunar conditions and geology. The ambition to send humans to the moon grew especially during the Cold War space race, leading to the ambitious Apollo program launched by the U.S. in 1961, aiming for a manned lunar landing within the decade. The Apollo program included numerous development and testing phases, with trials ranging from suborbital flights to lunar landing rehearsals. Highlighting this series was the iconic Apollo 11 mission, launched on July 16, 1969. The world watched on July 20, as Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins journeyed to the moon. Armstrong and Aldrin descended in the Eagle, leaving Collins orbiting above, and at 2.56 a.m. GMT, Armstrong's historic moonwalk captivated global audiences. Shortly after Armstrong, Aldrin also stepped onto the moon, spending two hours conducting experiments and collecting samples. Their mission concluded with the iconic moment of planting the American flag. They then rejoined Collins in the command module for their return to Earth. On July 24, 1969, they safely returned, landing in the Pacific Ocean, and were celebrated as heroes embodying human courage and determination. Their achievement realized humanity's age-old dream of lunar exploration and set the stage for future space missions. Collins, known less but crucial to the mission, had a notable career as a test pilot and astronaut. Raised in a military family, Collins frequently relocated, living in various countries and fostering an early passion for aviation and astronomy at St. Albans School, Washington. Being a 1952 West Point graduate, he chose the Air Force, serving as a fighter pilot in the Korean War before attending test pilot school at Edwards AFB. NASA selected him in 1963, training with Aldrin for the Gemini and Apollo missions. Collins's space journey began with Gemini 10 in 1966, co-piloted by John Young. And what sort of uh, people should they be? Who, who should you select? And all sorts of uh, crazy notions came out of the closets. Uh, for example, they said, well, the, there's, there's no air up there, and mountain climbers are used to a uh, very thin atmosphere, so we maybe ought to get mountain climbers. Other people said, well, it's dangerous. Maybe we ought to pick uh, hmm, bullfighters. Initially chosen for Apollo 8, Collins was reassigned to Apollo 11 after recovering from surgery, ultimately participating in the historic lunar landing. As the command module pilot, Collins played a crucial but often overlooked role, expertly navigating and maintaining the command module Columbia while his colleagues ventured onto the lunar surface. Collins's role involved complex responsibilities, including overseeing the docking process. Roger, Eagle, Roger how does it look? Eagle has wings. 
which was critical for the mission's success. After Armstrong and Aldrin descended to the moon's surface in the Lunar Module Eagle, Collins remained alone in the Mothership, or Command Module, known as Columbia. He was monitoring the systems, maintaining communication with mission control, and preparing for the Lunar Module's return. Contrary to perceptions of isolation, Collins was pivotal, engaged in critical calculations and maneuvers for the mission's crucial success. His precision and skill were indispensable for the mission's achievement. Collins faced the daunting possibility of returning to Earth alone if the mission failed, but executed his duties with precision and calm, significantly contributing to the mission's success, including the Trans-Earth Injection. Trans-Earth Injection, also known as TEI, is a critical maneuver used in spaceflight to set a spacecraft on a trajectory that will return it from the moon to Earth. This involves firing the spacecraft's propulsion system when it's on the far side of the moon, out of direct communication with Earth, to increase its velocity and direct it towards Earth for re-entry and landing. But then you start to question, what are the things this lone astronaut pondered upon during his alone times on the ship? As the lunar module which carried his crew members disengaged from the ship, Collins remained on board to command the ship. He spent a total of 21 hours in lunar orbit. In each orbit, Collins spent 48 minutes of it in radio silence, not a beep from his colleagues on the moon's surface, and not a single word from his team back on Earth. He just rotated in the dark, terrifying void of space, alone and in silence. That kind of loneliness will give a normal man a lot to think about on the far side of the moon. Cut off from his colleagues in mission control, Collins becomes officially the loneliest man in history. Over and over, the cycle repeated itself. However, Collins's view on this is not what one would have expected. You were orbiting on the far side of the moon in absolute pitch black, complete darkness. Yeah, the food was terrible, but uh, <laughs> the, I enjoyed my time behind the moon. Uh, it's a more rugged place. And, and not a very comfortable place. While solitude in space might overwhelm others, Collins found tranquility in it. On the moon's far side, cut off from all earthly contact due to the moon-blocking radio communications, he experienced a unique kind of peace. This made him the first to witness the moon's hidden face in solitude, despite being in orbit rather than on the surface. During the Apollo 8 mission, the crew orbited the moon together, remaining inside the spacecraft and experiencing the silence of space as a group. In contrast, Collins experienced periods of complete isolation on the far side of the moon, waiting until the spacecraft reached the near side to re-establish communication. The far side's absence of radio noise due to being shielded from Earth's emissions makes it an ideal spot for radio astronomy, allowing for the clear detection of faint cosmic signals without terrestrial interference. The moon's near side, in contrast, is bombarded with Earth's radio frequencies, complicating such detections. Lacking a significant ionosphere, the far side allows for uninterrupted cosmic radio observations. China's Chang'e 4 mission, landing a rover in the von Karman crater, aimed to explore this potential by conducting low-frequency radio astronomical studies with the help of a relay satellite at the Earth-Moon L2 point. At this exact place, the second Lagrangian, a balance of gravitational forces, facilitates communication between the rover, lander, and Earth. The moon's far side, shrouded in mystery and silence, offered Collins a unique solitude. He appreciated Earth's beauty from this distinct perspective, reflecting on humanity's place in the universe. Amidst this tranquility, Collins remained diligent, planning and ensuring mission success, embodying the pioneering spirit of Apollo 11 through his critical contributions and contemplative moments in the vastness of space. Orbiting the moon, he was among the few to witness its far side and the Earth rising over the lunar landscape, an experience that deeply moved him highlighting Earth's fragility and our interconnectedness. This revelation reinforced his commitment to Earth's conservation, advocating for greater environmental responsibility and hoping for global leaders to share his perspective. This solitude led to existential contemplation, reflected in his autobiography, Carrying the Fire, where he explored the universe's meaning and humanity's role. Space travel deepened his spiritual perspective, seeing the universe as purposeful and ordered. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. As a gift for staying until the end, I left you here two other mind-blowing videos like this one. See you soon!